we don't communicate. We don't talk to our peers. We mm-hmm. don't discuss. I mean, you know, I don't tell you. I, I can't tell you how much I've learned in appraising from doing a review. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. And welcome back to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out once again in the podcast chair. Got a special guest coming up. I want to pause here first to remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies. One of them, of course, is Working RE Magazine. Almost every morning I get an email from Working RE Magazine. And uh, I'll tell you, folks, they keep me informed as to what's going on in the valuation world. Check them out. Go to workingre.com. Again, it's workingre.com. All the mode is the company that I use for my software report writing. Have for 27 years, folks, and uh, you should be as well. Check them out by calling them at 800 all mode or jump on your computer at allamode.com. And finally, we're sponsored by Datamaster. Datamaster is saving appraisers time, saving appraisers money. We're talking 40 minutes per report, folks. It's a great program to help you to do more with less. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. One more time, it's datamasterusa.com. Well, folks, I want to introduce you to a special guest, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine. Uh, his name is Mr. Jarrett Hardesty. Uh, Jarrett, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Dustin. It's good to have you here. So let's uh, let's set this up a little bit, Jarrett. Uh, you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been an appraiser for quite a long time now. Nearly 20 years. Wow. So you're, uh, you'll never catch up to me because uh, I'm always going to be six years, seven years ahead of you. But uh, you're getting there. No matter how old I get, Dustin, you'll always be older. Just so you know. <laughs> older, wiser, you know, they're interchangeable. All right. That's subjective. L- <laughs> recently, a big change in your life, Jarrett. You, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your background, where you've, uh, where you've been, what you've done, and uh, what's recently changed. So I'm originally from Kentucky, born and raised there. Uh, I was an appraiser there for really all, all my career up until about the last three months, four mm-hmm. months maybe. Um, recently moved out to Idaho. A uh, big change for me is last time we did this podcast, I was in Kentucky, and this time we're doing this podcast, we're sitting right next to each other. <laughs> yes, we are, which is awkward, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's a little <laughs> bit nervous. So, I know. really am. It's super weird. I've only done this one other time with someone next to me when I did the uh, the episode with my daughter. I'm very used to Honestly, I used to get nervous because I was talking into a microphone with nobody sitting here, and it's very awkward to talk into a screen or a microphone and not have somebody on the other side of it. And now, after 700-plus episodes, it's really strange to talk to somebody <laughs> in the same room. <laughs> yeah, you guys missed him getting set up. It was actually quite humorous. He, he Look like he's like Ricky Bobby in the first interview. So. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't uh, doesn't come across. So uh, I'm looking at the screen, Jarrett. It's uh, it's negative two degrees Fahrenheit and fog. Uh, welcome to Idaho. Yeah, so you know that's what everybody from back home calls me. Like, what's the weather like? And I'm like, well, it's Idaho. What's it supposed to be like? It's cold and it snows. <laughs> yes, know? it is. But you know, I will say this on on the weather front. From being from you know the south, if you will, uh, it's much drier climate here. Hmm. So 20 degrees, 25 degrees is still cold. But it's not like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Right. At right. home, it gets 20 degrees, and you just want to run for the hills. I hear you. Yeah, no, there, it is a big difference. I've, I've been in cold in Idaho my whole life, uh, done quite a bit of traveling uh, the last few years, and, uh, and, and hitting places that got, have the humid as well as the cold, it, uh, it feels much differently. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've, I've loved having you here, Jarrett. I've loved getting to know you. We got to talking uh, the other day uh, about a, uh, a conversation that I think, uh, uh, you had a great idea. Let's have that conversation on the air. So here we are. Yes, here we are. And uh, the conversation is, uh, are you a crappy appraiser? Yes, I am. <laughs> he so didn't even you. hesitate folks. And so are you. Wait so, a second. You know. Wait a second. No, you can answer for you. You can answer for you. You, you answered very quickly. Uh, are you a crappy appraiser? Yes, I am. Uh, okay. Um, why did I hire you then? Yeah. You know, that's the million dollar question. I have no idea. <laughs> right. Cause I picked up the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. You're, you're a warm body. You had a pulse, right? I had a license. So. No, I, I, we were kind of joking, and, and this is all tongue in cheek. But you know, the industry is, is such in, a, in such a weird place. So we're we're an older industry. I'm in my mid forties. Mm. Um, I'm young as an appraiser. Well, relative. Relatively young as an appraiser. You know, I mean, I'm looking at you. You're... I've got gray hair. So, <laughs> um, but what has happened is, yeah, I've been doing this twenty years, and so in twenty years, I have established a workflow that is Jared's workflow, mm. much as you've done the same. Yeah. And um, kind of going into this, if if you do something different, if you're not 
you know, doing things. If I don't do things the way you do things, which is what I'm trying to Correct, say. Correct, yes. Then that makes me a crappy appraiser because we're all so independent that it's kind of like my way is the right way. I completely agree. In fact, this morning uh, over breakfast, you and I were talking about this very thing, and I'm not going to get into specifics, but uh, there's an order that came in uh, at our office, and uh, and you said I would do it this way, and I said I would do it this way, and we were, you know, as far apart on this as possible. Um, who's right? We both are. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because that's how we've done things our whole life. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you look at, look at, um, so, so I still have an office in Kentucky. Yeah. We do a lot of work. And when I was looking at my reports the other day, there's a lot of information that is in my reports that was built off a foundation of 20 years ago. Right. Yeah, there's, sure. There's a few comments in there that's been with me my entire appraisal <laughs> career. Which, by the way, I should just interject, folks. If you have not looked at your templates lately, look at your damn templates. <laughs> They've been modified. Don't get okay, me wrong. All right. I mean, I'm, not, not... I'm not saying that, but, but I did the same thing. I, I looked at my templates about two years ago. <clears throat> I'm sure I've looked at them since and, and saw things that have been in there for 27 years. <laughs> so I guess I'm about right to look at you. Look at your, you're saying you need right. to look at your templates right. over two years. I'm just talking to myself is what I'm doing. <laughs> But I mean, you know, you think about it, you know, we were taught to do things a certain way. We were taught to do adjustments a certain way. We were all taught different. Um, and, and, and your, your dad taught you. Right. Um, I learned from a, a few different people. My, my apprenticeship was kind of a mess. Okay. Um, but you know, that's how I learned how to do it. Hmm. And, and we're creatures of habit. And if you don't do things the way I do things, then, you know, I'm obviously doing them wrong. Right. Right. And which is not the case at all, but that's just how our industry has has grown, and I think it's becoming more and more entrenched because now we don't go to continuing education with other people. Correct. We do it online. Yep. At best, we do a, a virtual, mm-hmm. but you still get muted, and, it's, and you, you're still not talking to each other. I wish I had a mute button for you. That would be fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure my wife does too. So, <laughs> so she's been looking for the eject button in the car. Yeah, for I'm sure. Years. I'm We've sure. Been in almost twenty years. Well, have her call me. I'll tell her what it's at. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but you think about it. We're just not in a situation where we're interacting with each other mm. and then you look at some of these facebook groups and you know the guys around these facebook groups really try to do a good job sure but the free ones on facebook if you ask a question you get obliterated mm-hmm. by the answers yeah oh yeah and it's it's really unfortunate because you know how do we get better as an industry if we're not communicating and not willing to listen to each other uh, it's very true i've seen that for very a very long time it's one of the reasons i started the all-star team that we could have a, a safe place to ask questions because as you pointed out when someone asks a question online it's not hey, if it were me, I would do this, or hey, have you tried this? It's, you're dead wrong, you're damn wrong, and here's the right way to do it, and what a stupid question to ask anyway. You should never have had a license. Right. You're a moron. Right. Please go away. Yeah. Why is that, Jared? I mean, maybe I don't know, because I've been in this industry 27 years. I've never really done anything else, if you will, I mean, other than high school jobs. I taught for a while, uh, but I've not really entrenched myself in other industries. Do you think it's like this in all industries? No, no. So as you know, back in Kentucky, Valerie and I sell a lot of real estate. Hmm. And, you know, it always kind of blew me away. Mortgage brokers, realtors, bankers, title companies, everybody else gets together and shares ideals. And then you have us who are all locked away in our cave, right. banging out reports. Right. We don't, we don't get together. We don't interact. And so you could be doing things how you believe to be right. But if you're not keeping up with changes, whether it's a time adjustment or, or what, you know, staying on top of just, you know, market trends and what, whatnot. And, and if you're busy by yourself and you're, and you're a one man show, like most people are, you don't have the time to research that stuff unless you have the tools that does it for you. Right. Right. Well, I think that's a good point. So, all right. So the, the age-old question, we get asked this quite frequently, whether it be realtors, uh, loan officers, homeowners, mm-hmm. will often ask us this question. Hey, uh, I, I had an appraisal done, you know, years ago, and it came in at 500000 And then, you know, out of a fluke, I had to change blanks, whatever. And uh, I had another appraisal done, it came in at five fifty. Who's right? They both are. Wait a second. But we're all about value, right? We're all about coming up with, with what the quote unquote accurate value is. So how can they both be right? Well, one, they got both. But we both had, or we even said, we'll just use me and you in this example. Okay. Oh, yeah. Different methods of how we approach our value. Sure. We have different opinions. You were in a black shirt because you want to wear a blue shirt because you want to wear a blue shirt. And I'm wearing a black shirt because I well, it was on top of the pile this morning. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a different methodology. You Did you shake it off before you put it on? Uh, it's probably very <laughs> Fair enough. Hopefully, not. apparently, don't smell bad because I'm sitting right next to you. <laughs> but you know, but it's just it's just how we do things. So yeah, they're both right. You know, maybe maybe if it was two weeks later, maybe there was a comp that sold in that two weeks. Hmm. You know, you know, some people are more conservative and more liberal in value than others. But the last time I looked at the report, it said an estimated opinion opinion of value. Hmm. It didn't say an absolute. 
Back your indicator. <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, good. That's a, that's an excellent point. We're speaking with Jared Hardesty. Um, when we get back, Jared, I want to talk about where we go from here. You know, we we I think we've set this up in the sense that uh, you know every appraiser has their own opinion, and uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that one or the other is wrong. Uh, but the big question on the board is where do we go from here? I want to pause here first, folks, and remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies. One of them being Alamode. Alamode is a report writing software, folks, that blows the competition out of the water. The uh, amount of information that you can Keep in the report the amount of data that you can access, the tools that are there at your disposal, whether you're in the field or uh, at the office, and the way that you can transmit that data back and forth is awesome. If you've not used them in the past, folks, I implore you to go to their website and check out why Alamode is different and why Alamode is the leader. It's alamode.com, or you can pick up the phone and call them at 800 Alamode. Speaking of using technology to help us to be better, faster, and to be able to make more money, I mean, that's really why we're here, right? Make more money, be more successful. Data Master will do that for you. It's an investment in your business. Check them out by going to Datamaster USA. You've got to add the USA, folks, datamasterusa.com. One more time, it's datamasterusa.com. Finally, we're sponsored by the great people over at Working RE Magazine. Isaac Peck is the chief editor over there, a good friend of mine, folks. He works tirelessly to find out what's going on in the industry so that you don't have to. Literally, he scours the internet, he talks to the, the movers and shakers, and he synthesizes that information. If you want to know what's happening with Fannie Mae, with Freddie Mac, with the ANSI standards, with everything that's going on in our current industry, check them out and please sign up for their free newsletter. It's workingre.com, workingre as in workingrealestate.com. And welcome back to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out with you once again with a good friend of mine, a colleague, a peer, Jarrett Hardesty. Welcome back, my friend. I'm a peer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look up the definition of that. Maybe maybe I'll take that back. Who you, knows? Might, you might be using that way too loosely. So. <laughs> We've been talking today about, uh, well, the question on the board, Jared, is are you a crappy appraiser? And uh, you've already told me that you are. Uh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm getting there. <laughs> but by the very definition, that we all are because we do things different than our peers. Right. right? And it doesn't matter. I'll give, you, I'll give you a great example. So I have a good friend, and he's one of your master migrants, Tim. Okay, sure. And he and I were having a conversation, but we were talking. So Tim's an SRA, mm -hmm. and he's like, "I was doing this review, and we were, we were just talking about this one day in, in a group, and we we're like, he's like, we were I was doing this review, and I'm looking at this report, and I'm like, oh my god, this report's a mess. He did it this way. He goes, I pull up, I do all my charts and graphs, and get to it, and we arrive at the same value. Mm -hmm. And so I think that case I'm using that as an example is is Tim it puts a lot of effort and detail in his reports, mm -hmm. um, and someone else did not do as much effort and detail in their report. But when I got to the end result, it was the same or nearly the same. Right. And so, you know, yeah, maybe the appraiser eight. I don't, you know, of course, I don't know who it was, but um, you know, did things the way he does things, and Tim does them the way he does things, and, and they ended the same result. Who's who's right? Right. Well, and and even if they don't arrive at the same result, uh, as you mentioned earlier, who's right? Maybe both of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know. I know, like in 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 our office in Kentucky, you know, when we do a desk review or field review, I tell all all my certifieds and guys that are looking at them like. You got to put your your yourself in that appraiser's shoes mm. when you're doing that review because you can't look at it as how you do things. It's not is the answer true and correct to whatever it however it says to the mm -hmm. best best of you know whatever. It is not how is it how I would have done it. Mm. Is it is it how I would do it or is the answer correct? Yeah, you know when I first started out, I've, I've told the story before, but it's been a while, so indulge me, folks. Um, when I first started out, I had more than one mentor. You you mentioned uh, Jarrett, my dad, which was a, a great and my number one mentor for sure. Uh, but I had an individual um, who lived within the the, the area. Uh, and, and keep in mind, this was back in the day that uh, the mentor typically did not have to be in the home with the trainee. In fact, in the three years that I was training, the three years that I had a trainee license, uh, and I lived three hours away from my uh, my mentor. I think twice my dad actually had to get in the car and drive down and walk through a house. I mean, that, it was just a different world back then. Sure. And so it was important to not just have a mentor on how to do appraisals, but also have a mentor on finding, you know, getting geographically competent, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I, I had that guy. Uh, his name was Jerry. He was a great guy. Uh, he had been doing it forever. I mean, the guy was 110 years old um, and, uh, and just, just, uh, just a good guy. And uh, I would often... Uh, when I was in his area, he lived 30 minutes from where I was. When I was in that town, I would often go grab a, a six-pack of Coke um, and uh, walk in his office and put it on his desk, and we would talk. And uh, one day I was doing a field review, and I brought it with me. And uh, he was much more familiar with the area than I was. And why not? Let's get his opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And I put it on his desk, and I said, what do you think? And he looked through it for a second, and he picked up the phone. And I'm like, what the hell? Who's he calling? He called the damn appraiser that we oh, were reviewing. I've done that. And he said, Bob, what are you doing? And he goes, what do you mean, Jerry? And he said, Bob, I'm looking at your report right now, and you're an idiot. Talk me through this. 
And, you know, he was tongue-in-cheek, having fun. Right. And Bob, you know, he was on speakerphone, and uh, we're talking back and forth. And Bob said, well, I did that because I did this. He goes, well, I understand that. Why didn't you describe that in the, in the report? That makes sense now. Anyway, he hung up the phone. He goes, next time you have a problem with a report, pick up the, uh, pick up the phone and call the appraiser. <laughs> now, I can't tell you that I do that, but it was, it, was, it was an interesting lesson in why do we, why do we hide? Well, you know, it's funny. It's like on a review. It's like you know, let's eat the young. Right. It's right. kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I got a review on Dustin Boy. I'm going to nail his rear into the wall. Right. And um, and I, I don't get it. And I think a lot of it comes out of, um, you know, if 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 I'm not doing things the way Dustin does things, then you're mm-hmm. obviously wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's that's not saying that you're right or wrong. It's just that's nature. Sure. I think, um, you know, it's just it's just we 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 don't communicate. We don't talk to our peers. We mm-hmm. don't discuss. I mean, you know, I don't tell you. I, I can't tell you how much I've learned. And appraising from doing a review. Amen. Looking at a review and saying, well, how did they do this and what can I learn? Yeah. Not, I've got Dustin and I'm going to, boy, I'm just going to, I'm going to eat him alive. Right. It's, to me, it's more of a learning experience. If there's something that needs to be fixed, fine, call it out. But you can do it in a tactful and not, uh, you, know, you don't have to be a jerk about it. Yeah, you don't have to be vindictive. Right. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So where do we go from here, Jerry? Because as you pointed out, we don't see each other. I mean, we 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 signed up for a career that is very solo in nature. It's very self-centered in nature. Uh, even you know before the pandemic, at least we were going to classes once in a while. <laughs> you know, we were seeing each other. We're not even doing that anymore, as you pointed out. We don't see other appraisers. We might interact with them a little bit on social media, but again, as you pointed out, sometimes that's not the most friendly place uh, to interact. Um, so. Knowing this, knowing that we're all basically crappy appraisers at heart, right? right. Uh, where do we go from here? What do we change? What do we do? You know, it, it, that's the million dollar question. And if I had the answer, then I would be, you know. You wouldn't be sitting next to me, right? Probably not. <laughs> Dustin, I, think, um, I think really it's more of an issue of get involved with a, with a group. Get involved with mm. a group. And, you know, the Facebook groups are fine. But, you know, get involved with Blaine's group. Get involved with your group. Get involved in the NAA. Mm-hmm. Just get involved with your peers where you can ask a question and not be, because, you know, you and I have breakfast every once in a while. I'm yep. here in Idaho, and there's a lot of good information that comes out of those breakfasts just sure. having a conversation. You know, call call your competitor and take them to lunch. Take them to breakfast. What? Call your competitor and take them to lunch? That's oh, unheard of. I'm telling you, it's, you know, wow, I'm just, you know, committing sin over here. Well, well and, and, and Jared, and I don't want to interrupt your flow, but years ago, and this was right before the pandemic, um, well, not right before, two years before the pandemic, I started a breakfast club, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term. I mean, we didn't really call it anything. I just called up every appraiser that I knew locally, and I said, hey, let's go to breakfast. It's going to be Saturday morning. It's going to be at 9 o'clock. Um, you know, here's the place. And uh, I, I did it twice. <laughs> Nobody showed up. Well, um, the first time one person showed up, and that's fine. We had a good breakfast. The other the other time, two people showed up, um, and, and people just don't come to these. How do you get people out of their bed and in front of a scrambled egg uh, breakfast to have a conversation about the industry that we all chose to be in? I think maybe you start with a phone call okay, and say, hey, Dustin, you know, I'm Jared. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm an appraiser in town. I just, hey, I was working on this the other day, and I just wanted to see... Uh, what you thought about this? Gee, most people would look at that and like, what, what, what's this guy doing? What's his end game here? It's, <laughs> but it's you know, it's kind of like we all have the same. You know, out of, out of, if I do five inspections in a day, I have the exact same conversation with all my homeowners, and mm-hmm. it's not a, it's not a, a rude or short conversation. It is just a hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm here for five. I'm here for thirty minutes, uh, or whatever however long I'm gonna be there, and I'm just trying to break the ice. Mm-hmm. And so maybe if you reach out to your peers in town and just have a conversation. You know, it doesn't have to be 50 of you going to breakfast to have a fight. It could be <laughs> two of you going to breakfast to have breakfast. There you and, go. And, you know, I think, um, unfortunately, we all tend to stay in our caves. Yep. And we're all fiercely independent by nature because um, that's the industry that we've locked ourselves into. And, you know, we've got to get away from that, especially moving forward because, you know, you've said it. It's coming. If you're if you're not paying attention, big change is coming. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I think that if I, you know, if I could kind of fill in the blanks here, as the big changes come – we're all going to be better off if we if we move forward together. Yeah, I mean, you know, I see a lot of people saying, you know, like desktops and these hybrid appraisals, and, and I have I have mixed emotions on them. I don't like them no more than anybody else. If it, if I had my way, we just continue status quo, and then I would ride out my career like that. Um, but when but we, you don't have your choice, right? We don't, we don't have a choice, right? And if if you say, well, I'm not going to do them, by God, I'm drawing a line. Unless you're like my friends in Virginia, CMP appraisals, they have a huge social media business. Mm. You're going to do them, or mm. you're going to be out of business. And if you don't do them, you refuse to do them you're going to be in a situation of you're giving the lenders more fuel for their fire that there's not enough appraisers. Mm. And essentially, you're kind of screwing over the industry. Mm. You know, I'm not saying, you know, at the end of the day, it's your choice on your business model. But, you know, this is going to be a necessary evil going forward. It's interesting you say that because there's a lot of people who would say the exact opposite. I've heard it. They say that by doing these, by doing, by participating in a hybrid or a desktop, you're, you're ruining the, the industry. You just said the opposite. Well, it, if I refuse to do something, guess what? 
Somebody else is going to do it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair and enough. and the reason that we're seeing these desktops is because, well, let's face it, most people work on their on their on their own, and they they are their mm-hmm. you know back to your doctor analogy that you talk about all the time. They are the, the receptionist, the bookkeeper, the appraiser, the data entry person, the bill collector. Mm-hmm. And when you see what is the national average on turn time right now, it's like what twenty seventeen days. Seventeen days. Yeah, crazy. And so so there's an issue, and and our our industry is not getting older or not getting younger. Um, when I moved to Kentucky, the, the appraiser I love her to death, and she's awesome. She showed up with a clipboard and a and a phone and a tape measure, right? Which is totally fine. At least she had a phone. <laughs> yeah, she had a phone. <laughs> she's getting there. But you know, she's it, which is fine. This is how she's always done things. But it's not the most efficient way to do an inspection, right? Um, and so you know, we have extended extended turn times. And all right, so we refuse to do desktops. Okay, fine. They'll just replace us with something else. <laughs> well, you said it. You okay. said it, and I'm afraid uh, you're 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 spot on correct. Well, spoken uh, spoken words of wisdom from the crappiest appraiser out there, Mr. Jared Hardesty. Thank you for joining us. I may not agree or disagree <laughs> with you on that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll agree that we're all crappy appraisers at heart, but uh, doing the best we can. Jared, thank you for joining me today. It was uh, a pleasure to get to know you better, and uh, appreciate you sharing your wisdom with uh, with the folks out there. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Anytime. Awesome. That was Mr. Jarrett Hardesty. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, it's been a great, uh, uh, great to get to know Jarrett a little bit better and uh, speak with each of you. And we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All Star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. Uh, thank you for joining me, folks. Uh, appreciate you being here today, and uh, we will take you. Uh, sorry, there. <laughs> Spit it out. Yeah. <laughs>